Cause you never knew a nigga harder than Jukebox. And I ain't never loved nobody harder neither. Juke everything. We shall meet on that beautiful. The love that these two characters have for each other makes us wonder even more. How did they go from this in their childhood to this in power, which was a relationship that just felt really cold? Sean was a pawn. You sacrifice pawns for the greater good. Even though Raising Kanan is a prequel which is based on the origin story of Kanan Stark, it's also the coming of the age story of his cousin, Laverne Thomas, who goes by the name Jukebox, which is a name that was given to her because she could imitate anybody on the radio when she was younger. Their relationship in power was complex, but it painted the picture of two characters whose relationship was a reflection of the harsh environment they grew up in and the experiences they shared. They both grew up in South Jamaica, Queens, and came from a world which is full of violence, crime, betrayals, the lack of acceptance, manipulation, survival, and a shared trauma that starts to shape some of their interactions. And the fact that the writers are now showing us this side to their relationship, which we've seen through different ways across three seasons of Raising Canaan, is heartbreaking, tragic, and beautiful storytelling at the same time, because the writers are exploring the darkest and most morally complex elements of human connections, especially considering we do know how the story ended. So in this video, we're going to be running through the relationship between Kanan and Duke, but why we're finally set for a huge turn which will change their relationship as we now see it in Raising Kanan Season 3. When we were introduced both Kanan and Duke, they both seemed like innocent ordinary school kids, but they were anything but normal because of who their family was and due to their upbringing. Kanan was someone who was mostly sheltered by rock, while Duke had a bit more of a chaotic upbringing. Her mother Kenya left when she was just a baby, and Marvin did a short stint in prison while she was younger, and so not only did Duke have to move in with Aunt Rock, this also made her grow up faster than Kanan, where she showed she was aware of not just the world that they live in and the consequences of it, but also who Rock was and what she had Kanan do towards the end of season 1. That's not how it works for us. We playing in this grown folks world. We can't just wipe our fuck ups off us like that. Look, we deciding who we gonna be for the rest of our lives without even knowing who the fuck we are now. I think that Jukebox is starting to see the world for what it really is, and she is maturing at a rate that is a lot faster than Kanan, and we'll see how they start to differentiate in thought, opinion, and fact. So those were some words from Hayley Kilgore going into season 2 of Raising Kanan, and she was right. Even though both were going through their own issues and traumas, which they shared with each other, Duke also understood that this is what they have to go through because of who they are, and the world that they live in. She also refused to blame Kanan when Nicole died, even though it was through Kanan's bad batch of product that he cooked up. They both continued to go through their own issues with Kanan having to deal with lies and manipulation from Rock, while Duke had to go through the issues with Marvin and Kenya, but they were always there for each other. Now throughout season 2 we saw them opening up about how they feel with what was going on through their lives, which is where we saw Duke's maturity to a lot of what Kanan was going through. Despite the heartbreak in Duke's life, she sat there in silence, listened to Kanan and gave him advice. But one thing I actually liked that the writers did was, they kept giving us reminders these two were just kids, although two kids who had to grow up quick and hustle. So they were both hustlers in their own ways, but where one had a vision to become a singer and do the complete opposite of Marvin, the other wanted to follow in Rock's footsteps. Now up until episode 4 in season 3, there wasn't much interaction between Kanan and Duke because they'd been pretty much on their own journeys after everything that they went through in seasons 1 and 2. They both sat around this table in 301 hurting from the loss of loved ones, lies and betrayal. But on one hand where we had Kanan dealing with a broken relationship with Rock, Marvin and Duke's relationship was the polar opposite. So when we talk about Marvin and Luke's characters having done a complete role reversal from season 1, so has the relationships around this table, with Lou being the odd one out, who pretty much just wants to be left alone at this moment in time. Now with Kanan, we've seen him start to build his own mini drug empire. Meanwhile in Duke's world, she's been going through her ups and downs as usual, she wanted to carry on singing but with everything that she's been through in Queens from a relationship with Marvin, the loss of Nicole, Kenya and more recently after Burke's death, she signed up to join the military. But soon after she did get the news that she did make the girls group. Nobody's taking me away from you, Kate. Love you. I love you too. We all know any sort of happiness in power is always short lived. We have seen a few happy moments over the years. But even those happy moments that we have seen, they'll definitely come crashing down sooner or later. The same goes for this story because we all know how it ends. But just on a quick side note, I do have a couple of theories when it comes to Duke's singing career. I do feel like Gerald Moore who works at The Voice as an editor could hinder Duke's career by writing a piece in the entertainment section or I can actually see Duke being called up by the military 
and just as she's about to make it big, her dream gets snatched away when she had it in the palm of her hands. So let's see what happens with that one. But in regards to Kanan and Duke, it really is quite sad knowing how close these two really were when they were younger, which only makes what we saw in power quite sad. So the question is, when will it take a turn for the worst? He was changing a lot. He also kicking it with some old heads. Your mother is good at this work. So at some point in season 3, we are going to see Duke telling Rock about Kanan's business, which also goes back to Kanan's narration at the end of episode 4, which I think will have a lot of relevance to Duke telling Rock about what Kanan's up to. I never like being around the who talk. Because if they gapping off about some other fool's business, you could be damn sure they talking the same shit about yours. Don't speak about what ain't yours. In other words, don't run your mouth, just like she was in power. And also like Burke was doing in Raising Kanan. And this is what I think will be the catalyst for the change in their relationship. Put yourself in Kanan's shoes. When Duke tells Rock, he's going to feel this sense of betrayal in a world where he doesn't really have that many people he can trust or confide in. He can't trust Rock for obvious reasons, and we also her latest move when she put the gun in his backpack. He definitely can't trust Famous either. Symphony is gone who had his back in moments in seasons 1 and 2. And even though we've seen him call Lou for help, let's remember, he was the one who killed Dee Wiz. And so while we're on the topic of how Kanan will feel betrayed from Duke, let's also not forget that Duke did know who got rid of Dee Wiz, and she didn't tell Kanan. Whether he'll find that out as well, who knows, only Duke can kind of reveal that herself, but if he does, then all it will do is just add even more bad blood between them. Kanan will feel like he won't be able to trust Duke, and he will feel betrayed by the only person he could confide in that has pretty much been in his corner from day one. Now this brings me onto the scar on Kanan's neck, which is something I've mentioned once or twice in the past. Back in power, Kanan had a visible scar on his neck that was from his childhood, but it was said that he got this scar in a fight with Jukebox when they were younger. But whether they stick to the same story from Corny Kemp, I'm not too sure. It was never mentioned in power itself, so raising Kanan can actually take this in whatever direction they feel that suits them best. But I wouldn't be surprised to see them getting into a real fight, because Haley Kilgore did tease out we are going to see the badass side to Duke this season. We've been patient. They've set the foundation of her and Kanan's relationship, but now's the time to start seeing them tear it apart. So let's see what else they do apart from Duke telling Rock about Kanan's business. Now the next question is just how far do they take their relationship in raising Kanan as a whole? We know that they picked up with Kanan's story in power as he was in jail serving a 10 year prison sentence after he was set up by Tasha and Ghost. With Jukebox, we travel to DC in season 3 where we learn she was a cop. It was also said that she was an 8 year veteran of the department. So when we asked the question about how did Duke become a cop who influenced her decision to turn to law enforcement, you can be damn sure it wasn't Kanan. You ain't black no more. You blue. Which is why I can help. Not only did Duke become a cop while Kanan was inside, but Kanan despises law enforcement through past experiences. But how far do they take their relationship in raising Kanan? Now it all depends on how far they take the storyline in truth. Because if they were able to take it up to the point where Kanan goes to prison, then you'd have to introduce a young Tommy and Ghost, who would have definitely crossed paths with Duke, which I personally think will happen eventually. But if you're sending Kanan to prison, then you'd also have to introduce a young Tasha. So it really depends on how far they take the storyline. And so we may not get all the answers we're looking for when it comes to Kanan and Duke's relationship because there is a huge gap. We may get hints as to why she left for DC, why she became a cop, or why she changed her surname to Ghana, but we may never really know the truth. Now alternatively they can retcon the storyline because they have done that with other moments from power such as changing Ghost's age, the age in which Kanan was said to be hustling and so on. So the writers can always take that route. So much of their relationship really does depend on how far they take the storyline as much as anything, but we can certainly be sure their relationship will start to fracture in season 3. So with that being said, it definitely will be a tragic story, but a great one at that. So drop all your thoughts down below in the comment section and let me know how you see their relationship playing out in season 3 and beyond. Drop all your predictions down below in the comment section and as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.